Okay, today we're going to work with typography. Uh, so we're going to be focusing on the type tool. On the left hand side, as you can see, it's a big bold letter T. If you select it, just click on it once. Or if you hold the button down, you can see it gives you various different options. Horizontal, vertical, and then using the mask with horizontal and vertical also. I'm just going to select horizontal and then I'm going to take you up to the settings across the top. So starting from nearest the left, we've got the type tool here. If you right click over the T, you can reset tools and reset all tools. So if you've used it numerous times before, you have different fonts and everything else, colors sorted, you can reset the tools so it'll take it back right to the beginning. Obviously it's focused on the one I've got in there at the moment. So I'm just going to do control Z to undo that option. I'm just going to put a new layer in just so I can leave that alone. Right, so I'm going to start by selecting anywhere on the screen. And as you can see, my settings are at 139 points. So we're going to just change that, take it down to 72 just to make the size a bit smaller for now, but big enough to still read. Um, and then we have on the left, we have this button here. Now, as you can see, when you press on it, the cursor changes to a vertical. So instead of having to go through here and select vertical, you can just change it automatically between horizontally and vertically. Right there, so we're gonna work in horizontal. And then we've got numerous different types of font. So you can go ahead and select one. I'll just go for Harlow. And then you have the choice of italic, obviously with this being a script or italic anyway, it's not gonna give me the option to bold, italic, underline, etc. So now we have the size toolbar. So if you hover over the T next to the size, you can automatically click and hold and then drag left or right to adjust the size. Alternatively, drop down menu. Even if you didn't want to do the drop down menu, you can change it here by using your keypad. So I can just put in 145 and that'll make that bigger. Right, so I'm just going to get something typed. And then obviously you've got, you can make it sharp, crisp, strong, or smooth. It's not going to affect this though, because I haven't got it highlighted. So there we go. And you can't tell much of a difference on there. So you can either have it justified to the left, put in the center, or over to the right. But at the minute we don't want it in a particular place anyway. This is quite helpful if you've got paragraphs of text and then you can see the justified and centered a bit more obviously. And then we have the color. And you've got your color picker you can choose from, various different colors. If I wanted to use the same color that I've got of the text already, I can just use the picker or the sampler and just move that over to anywhere and sample the color. And there we go. So from here, we can select OK. And then we're going to use the Move tool and I'm just going to drag that to the center. So if you make a mistake and you think, OK, I've spelt it wrong or I just want to add a couple more words, easiest way to do it is move over to the right hand side. And you can see in your Layers panel, Text Hello, it will automatically put the text in there for you. So we can just double click on the T over in the Layers and it'll select the entire text and you can go back and change to different colors like so and then obviously you get to accept it accept with a tick and decline with a circle and if you wanted to add anything else in there like so if you press enter it's going to give you a new line so don't forget to accept the settings. And the same again. If you wanted to make any changes, just double click on the T and it'll take you right back in there. So now we have Hello World. Here's your programming <laughs> in there as well. So from here, if we right click over on Hello World, you can 
see numerous options. So you can convert it to smart, smart, smart object even. Create a work path, convert to a shape. And then you've got your options that you had up here in the toolbar, non, cr sharp, crisp, strong, smooth. And we're gonna cover the warp text later. Um, we can change the colors of the layers just so it stands out a bit more. If you wanted to highlight all your layers that color, then that's fine. So now we can put an effects over onto it. So if we just click effects on the bottom, you've got numerous effects that we've covered in previous sessions. So we can do a drop shadow. So if we move this bar across so we can actually see our text, you can see it's automatically gone to drop shadow and put a tick in there. So that's what we're working with. Now for the drop shadow, you can see it's slightly, but if I was just to click and rotate it round, you can see it's rotating both the top and bottom one. So I'm just gonna put the drop shadow roughly there just to make it stand out a little bit more. Obviously you can do it from the angles and the settings here as well. And you can specify the, the degree of it you want to. And then you have the blend color or the blend mode. So you can put a soft light on, linear light, and you can play around with some of the other settings on here. So you can darken it and multiply it. You could change the color of the shadow by using this selection here. So I can change the shadow to red. So if you are doing this on a back, back, black background, for example, you wouldn't want your shadow to be black. <laughs> so we can select various different colors to make it pop out a little bit more. <clears throat> so this is the best way to make your 3D text, even though you started off with 2D text, to turn it into something that's 3D to make it stand out from the page. So I'm just gonna select bevel emboss. Now, if I click on bevel emboss, so we've worked with this slightly as well before, you can see it's automatically beveled the text and you can change your depth as well. So back to drop shadow, you've got the distance. So you can literally pull the shadow far behind. So you don't wanna go too far. And you could spread your shadow, make it thicker. And obviously make the size bigger as well. And then you can add different noise to it. As you can see, it's getting quite speckled. And I'm just gonna drop that noise back down. It's a bit too much. Maybe take the spread down a bit again. I'm gonna select OK. So then when you select OK, it'll give you the choices that you've chosen. And that is your text. Now, if you wanted to change type of text, don't forget, just double click on your T and you could pick a diff different font. If you think that maybe that wasn't suitable enough for what I'm working with. And there you go. So something else we haven't worked with as well is this tool option here, which is the warp text. So as you can see, it gives you preset. So for example, we haven't got any warp on it at the moment, <clears throat> but these are Photoshop's presets that you can choose from. So if you wanted the text to arc, it automatically does that for you. And then you can distort the bend. So it can go the opposite way around. Oh, maybe that much. And then take the horizontal distortion and then the vertical. So there are many options <coughs> with warping your text. I'm just going to select OK. And there you have it. Text and various options and how to put that on your image. So if you wanted to create a poster out of a photograph you've taken, maybe send greeting cards, postcards, all fantastic. Um, and there's plenty of effects that you could play around with. So for now, I'm gonna move on to selecting an image. So I found this image on Google, as you can see, just a side view. And I've copied that into Photoshop. 
So what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to arrange it and put text or make a text animal. So essentially some word art. So first of all is when you've put your image in it will come up as layer one. So you can rename this whatever animal you've chosen. Then we are going to select the cat. So I'm just going to go and select pixels, but it's going to select the whole outer edge. So I'm just going to get off that. I'm going to use the magic eraser tool. I'm just going to get rid of the background. That should have done it. There we go. I'm going to delete this layer background as well. So there we are. We've got our basic image of the kitty cat. And I am just going to move my select tool and we're going to go right click and we can select the pixels again. So when you right click, make sure to click over the image and it will select the pixels that you have on your screen. As you can see, I think though it's selected quite a few little dots around it because of the image I have actually chosen. So I'm going to create a new layer and um, with the selection still ready. I'm going to go to edit and stroke and then I am going to choose about six pixels, maybe five. Five pixels should do. You can choose a colour like so and when I press OK and make sure it's at 100% opacity and what this will do is it will do the stroke of a brush all around where the selection is made. So OK, and you'll be able to see, as you can see, it's selected a lot of white dots. So I am just going to make sure I deselect off the images. And then using the eraser tool, I'm just going to make that bigger. And I'm just going to delete these little bits of selection that the stroke tool has completed on there for me. Now don't worry if it's not perfect at all because we're not going to really focus on the image as much. We'll be getting rid of that eventually. So all we're focusing on is the outline. So I'm just going to tidy up that little bit there. I can fill that bit in afterwards. Don't forget to make your brush bigger and smaller. You can use the square bracket keys on the keyboard and that will control the size of your brush. So for now, I'm just going to select the pencil tool. I've got it set as five. And it's going to keep that same color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select sections of the cat. So I'm just going to draw around, try and follow the cat structure. Not perfectly, but as close as I can. Maybe just the tail as well. Try to avoid very sharp pointy edges if you can. Like that there because <laughs> when we start putting text into this it's going to be quite difficult to warp it all right so there we go once I remove this you can see that's our basic outline of our cat and I could be able to tidy up little bits and pieces here and there I'm not going to worry too much about that it gives a little bit of characteristic around the edges there so you can be a bit more delicate and keep it quite tidy. Uh, I'm going to keep the cat off actually because we have our baseline now. So now we're going to insert some text. So uh, you can think of random words associated with the animal. You can put anything that you want in there. So I'm just going to put independent. Now 
There we go. My spelling. I'm just going to accept that and I'm going to use the Select and Move tool and move it roughly to where we want it. So now I want to select the text again. I can just do so like this. I'm just going to change the color to red. And I'm going to keep the font the same. Um, it's on italics, but now I can show you. We can have demi bold, demi bold italic. As you can see, it'll just make it a little bit bolder. A little bit more italic there. So to transform, it's Control T. And then we can try and wiggle that round. And that might be a little bit too big. So I'm going to have to select the text again and shrink it. So double click. I need to accept the settings from the transform. Double click. Maybe try 60. That looks about right. And set the settings. So now we are going to, in order to warp it effectively, we're going to have to right click and rasterize the text type. So that's rasterize and it'll take it into an image. We can edit and transform and we're going to select warp. As you can see, it will give you boxed off areas that you can use. And what we're going to do, we're just going to manipulate these points around it to stretch and move the text so it'll fit in with what we have. You might find that you have to click a few places. We'll just manipulate it around. Obviously, when you move one point, it might move the rest of it. Like so. We can bring this one right down. So we're going to try and keep our text within the areas. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's just to try and get the shape of the cat going. There, that should do. So we're going to accept those settings. And there we have independent. So when we get rid of the cat eventually, we're going to have a lot of text that make up a nice cat. So we're going to try something different. I've got like, I would say that's a, almost an oval type shape. So if you have any oval type shapes, it's great because we can put our text in. I'm going to just change the color. Put the green. So what could we put? A feline. It's probably a bit too bright. Select the text first. Darken that a bit. There we go. So I'm just going to move this text down to here. I'm going to Control T to transform. I'm going to put it there. I think it should do fine. We might need to make that text a little bit bigger. There. So we can transform. So when you transform, you can warp it. But as you can see, it's not going to do so much. So I'm just going to right click and rasterize and then edit, transform, and warp. So as you can see on the toolbars, when you select warp, you've got all these custom ones again. And I'm just going to select the bulge one. And there. As you can see it's done it from the side. And change the side of the bulge as well. So that's not getting the effect that I want. So I'm going to edit transform. Oh, no, that one. Edit transform and warp. And then 
and stretch these ones out. Like I say, if you get the warp one, it should automatically do it with one pull instead of having to manipulate all these different edges. Like so. I'm going to accept that. As you can see also as well, it'll stack up all your layers and you can see independent feline so automatically it puts the text in there for you. So slowly build it up and build it up. And I've got a few more in here. I can show you. And then as I take layer two away, you can see it's starting to make it up. So I'm not gonna finish that for you. I'm going to let you carry on and fill your animal with text. <laughs> As you can see, I've got Squeakers, which is my cat's name. But it doesn't matter on the text. I'm not going to be checking the spelling or anything like that, as you can see <laughs> here. But it's just to, so you can play around with the text and get exactly how you want. Add some effects to the text. So Kitty, for example, here, I can add an effect as well. I can bevel and emboss. Um, add a drop shadow like that and it's popped out the diagram a little bit more it makes it look a bit more 3d all right so I'll leave you to that <laughs>